Microsoft Teams Live Events is a webinar platform that can do a lot more. It can automatically give you subtitles in up to six languages uh, that you can pre-specify as the organizer and you can change the playback speed when you're watching it. And this is actually a live webinar so people can rewind it, but they can also go and jump to the live broadcast. So uh, when you're doing a webinar, you can either do a regular Teams meeting or something called a live event. So how they differ is a meeting tends to be participatory by everyone, whereas a live event is more of a one-way broadcast from the presenters and any panelists. A meeting will have an inclusive chat, whereas the live event only has a moderated Q&A. And the meeting can be with any free account, whereas a live event, you need to have a Microsoft Office 365 Enterprise license, E1, E3, E5. I'll show you how to check whether you have that later on in this video. Very important point though, as long as the organizer has this account, the presenters, etc., can have absolutely any account. Hi, my name is David Benheim, and I make a lot of videos on business technology. So please consider subscribing if you want some more. So Teams comes as part of Office 365 E1 license, which goes down to $8 um, and that allows you to do a live event for up to 10,000 users. Uh, the competitors, by contrast, Zoom, GoToWebinar, for example, these are much, much, much more expensive, and it's just one feature. It's not the entire suite you get with Office 365. Although these might be a little bit simpler to set up, uh, they have less functionality as well than the live event that I'll go through. And this video tutorial should make it really easy for you to know how to set this up in future. So live events has three different roles, the producer, the presenter, and the attendee. In terms of what licenses they need, the producer does need to be uh, using a Teams desktop application. The presenter as well, Teams desktop application, but that can be a free or a paid account inside or outside your existing account. And an attendee can look at this from anywhere, a browser, a mobile, they don't have to have Teams. They don't have to have anything installed. The producer, what they would do is they would queue up the content. So here we have, for example, the green person is presenting his slides. And then there's a queue. The purple is coming next. And the orange is just queued up later on. And they can then just move it along. So the purple then goes to live and they queue it up. They also have Q&A moderator privileges, as does the presenters. The presenters would share their screen, share their voice and their video, etc. And just a side note that the producer can also be a presenter. Finally, the attendee controls. So the attendee is just watching at this stage, but they have all sorts of cool things they can do. For example, they can rewind, they can speed up or slow down, they can get live translations using AI, they can uh, ask questions in the Q&A. So go to the calendar tab in Teams and then go to the drop down next to new meeting and choose live event. And then you tend to be the organizer, but you can invite presenters. So I'm also going to invite this person. That's just me from my Hotmail account. You can invite anyone. The only thing is they need to have Microsoft Teams desktop. So I'm going to click next and I'm going to choose that this is public. So notice the three options. It can either be only people and groups that you personally invite. It can be organization wide and require a sign in, or it could be public and no sign in is required. This is probably the most common type that you would use. And you have a few more options over here. So you plan to use teams to share content from presenters, webcams and screens. And then is the recording available after? Is the captions working? So here you can decide the spoken language, which for now can only be a couple, and you can choose what to translate to. So you can choose up to six over here. For some reason they have Klingon, but they don't have other languages, for example, Kamai, and then just click schedule. So you could uh, click get attendee link, and then you can copy it and then paste it anywhere you want. It could be an email, it could be a calendar invite that you send people or Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, Telegram, however you choose to communicate. 
Uh, you can, if you want to edit this, so edit the event. So another thing that people like doing in Zoom or other applications when they do webinars is have a sign up form. There's nothing built into Teams at the moment that can do that, but there's a pretty easy workaround. You just want to go to Microsoft Forms. So you can search for Microsoft Forms and then click on this. It might ask you to sign in as you go along, but Microsoft Forms is a lot like Google Forms if you've ever used that. Pretty easy to use. You just sort of create a form. So it even uses AI to give you all of these things and you can just click to add whichever ones you want like that, add selected. Or you can just add lots of other questions as you choose. To share it, press share, and anyone with a link can respond. You can do it there. You can copy the link. There's lots of good documentations on the Microsoft website. So this is really good plan for live events and teams. Highly recommend reading this. It has information about what licenses people need. Um, and then over here, sort of maximum capacity size, uh, what kind of things you can do with it, etc., etc. as you go along. There are lots of other resources as well uh, from an attendee's perspective, a producer's perspective, a presenter's perspective, best practice, etc. When it's ready for you to go, you can click the join button from here. And then it lets you join as a producer or it might say as a presenter but you can also join as an attendee like this. So generally you would click join now. The recommendation is start this about 30 minutes before the actual meeting and share a slide saying starting soon, maybe something branded. Useful tip that I found out if you are the producer, start a chat and say hello, say for example, here is the event, doesn't matter what it is, but the producer can do that. And then the presenters themselves get a message. Notice when you are in Microsoft Teams and you are not in your own tenant, you're in a guest tenant, then you don't have the calendar view. So it's not as easy to find the way to join the event. In fact, uh, the best way to do it is either through sending the, the link or if you do it in the chat, then they have this chat that pops up. So it's super easy for them to just say, join and then they can join the event. Notice it says live events are better in the Teams app. In fact, producing and presenting a live event is not available on the web currently. So you need to use the Teams desktop app in order to present or produce a live event. So uh, yeah, you can join as an attendee only from this view. And now we're in pre-live mode because the producer hasn't started the event yet. So they can do most of the Microsoft Teams features, for example, show background effects and choose a corporate background and apply that. Otherwise you can add a new one that way. And they can also go through the conversation, the participants list, just like you would expect in a regular Teams meeting. They also have the same Q&A privileges as the producer. So that's it. They can share content this way and they can leave the meeting as they please. It doesn't affect what else is happening in the meeting. So this is the producer view that I see over here. So this is just something with a virtual background that I've put in to uh, make it look like there's another person on the call and they can share the content. So this is being shared from their computer and me as the producer, I can see it like this. So the producer can decide on what content to put in the queue and then push that out. So for example, I might want to say that this is going to be pushed out <laughs> so I can click on send live, but then I can edit and add whatever I want there. So now every attendee is seeing this view. They're also listening to me speaking uh, or whoever has their mic on muted speaking. Um, but I can, let's navigate what goes in the queue. So I can choose between these views, either a single source or content on the left and speaker on the right. So let's go for that one. And then I can click on this bit and I want to put in these slides that are being presented by the other presenter. This is on their computer. And on this, I wanna switch it to be me, like that. So I set up what is in the queue and then I can press send live. Then it goes from there into this one. 
So you have some other controls up here. This is health and performance. So here I can see sort of the bandwidth and a few other kind of techie bits there. This is the Q and A we'll get through later. Uh, the only way we know the attendees is from this. It just says there's a count of two attendees who are currently attending. Most of the other options are very similar to the regular teams, but they are only between the producer and the presenters. Things like meeting notes, chats, and participants view. If I share, for example, I'm going to share this. If I click back here, it says something is currently being shared in the live event. Anything you share will replace it. So when I share something, it doesn't just replace it in the queue. It replaces it directly here, which is maybe a little bit confusing. So now it's showing it there. And if I alt tab, I can see that it's showing me just that. So someone who's coming to the live event, they get this screen when they click the link and they can either sign in or join in anonymously. Um, they don't need to download the desktop version. They can just join like that. Sometimes Teams prompts you to open up the desktop app if you already have that. But other than that, they can join it like this. They get their Q&A and they get the main screen there. Um, now, if they have been sent the link after the event, then they just have this video. So this is now after the event has ended. They are just given this video here. But if they are joining the live event, then they'll get the opportunity to um, experience it as it's happening live, ask a question, etc. In fact, you can even ask a question after event. So from the attendees perspective, this is how they see it. They can see it from either a web browser or the Teams app or even on the mobile device. Now they can actually go to rewind to any part of the video that they want. And then they can jump back to live as they please as well. So they can just click at the end there to go back to live. Uh, or they can just skip to live broadcast by clicking there. They can also turn the mute button on or off. They can edit certain settings, like if they want to see it at a different speed, they can change the speed, obviously, for the backtrack one and not for the current one. There you go, I'm speaking quite fast. They can also uh, change the quality if they just want to be a little bit faster to load up. If their device isn't great, they could do that. From here, I've pressed pause, but what I can do is I can click on settings, choose the captions, and let's do French. Play. Decent, and certainly if you want to give people the option. Uh, plus, they can ask questions. So I'm going to go to show Q&A, and I'm going to ask a question. So my name is Dave. This is because I signed in anonymously. Back to the producer role. So this pops up with a notification. They can either give a private reply. So like that, or this one, they can publish it. So by publishing it, then everyone sees the question. So here's new, here's published, or this is dismissed. So in this one, I can dismiss it and it goes into this toggle. So I go back here and I can see the featured questions is that one there. My questions, it has the moderator giving their own response and this one has something else. So I can keep going. So from anywhere on Office 365, you can click your name and then go to my account. Click on subscriptions and then you're looking for E1, E3, E5 in here. If you have business basic, business premium, etc., unfortunately you don't have this feature. It's also worth being aware of the admin settings for Teams Live events. So you might need to be an admin to do this, but if you click here, you can go to admin. From there, you can choose show all and scroll to the bottom and you get Teams. So then from here, you can click on meetings and then go to live events policies and click on this one. This is the default one. Allow scheduling, I turn both of these on. Who can join everyone and who can record? I usually say always record, but you can set it for the organizer to record. 
Live event settings, I don't tend to use this. Some features not currently available with Teams live events that you can find in similar applications like Zoom's webinar product. So you can't promote someone from being an attendee to a presenter. Polls, they've said, are coming but are not yet available. You cannot unmute another presenter or remove a participant. Uh, the layout options are a little bit limited in what you can broadcast. Uh, registration forms are not built in. YouTube Live or Facebook Live cannot happen. And it, the participants, attendees, cannot raise their hands during the meeting. When it's time to end the event, uh, if you click leave as the producer, then it says they'll see a placeholder before someone else becomes a producer. Not very useful, they just see something like this. If you click end, then it says you can't restart a live event after it's ended. So end live event. And then the participants will just see that the live event has ended as well. To get resources after the event, navigate back to the calendar view in Teams and open this up. And then you can go to live event resources. So you have the Q&A reports you can download. You have the attendee engagement reports. I'll download that as well. You have the recording is currently enabled. Uh, the transcripts, you can download it in whichever language you want. The Q&A, all the questions that were asked. Who joined? <laughs> this is the only person who joined as an attendee. This is the attendee report. So the participant ID, the name, uh, if they're anonymous, then it doesn't have what they did when they joined, when they left, etc., and which time by UTC. And this is just the attendance list there. So if you like this video, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I have tons more great content on every sort of business technology from Teams to Excel to PowerPoint, etc., etc. as you go along.